Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a fun riddle that's been asked as an interview question at many companies, including Apple. There are three boxes. The first box contains only apples. The second box contains only oranges. And the third box contains apples and oranges. A Riddler has put you up to a challenge. The Riddler will remove all of the labels from the boxes and then mix up the boxes so you don't know which box contains which fruit. The Riddler then labels the first box as apples, the second box as oranges, and the third box as apples and oranges. However, these are not the correct labels. All of the labels are written to be incorrect. None of the boxes has the correct label. Your job is to fix the labels. You cannot see inside any box, but you can ask for a sample. You point to a box and receive a randomly selected fruit from that box. The question is, what is the least number of samples you need to guarantee that you can fix the labels? So let's try an experiment to see if we can solve the problem. Let's just go ahead and pick a sample from the very first box, which is labeled apples. Imagine the sample given to us is an orange. What can we conclude? It is possible that the box actually contains only oranges. That's one possibility. But the box may also contains apples and oranges. All we know is we have an orange, and it could either be from a box that has oranges or apples and oranges. So from this one sample, we are not able to figure out the label of this box or the other boxes. So it would seem you need more than one sample to solve this riddle. But there actually is a way you could solve this in one sample. If you pick from the correct box, which is the box labeled apples and oranges. Let me illustrate the solution step by step. Let's pick a sample from the apples and oranges box. There are two possibilities because the two types of fruits are apples and oranges. The sample could be an apple or the sample could be an orange. Let's work through one case. Suppose the sample given is an apple. There are three possibilities for the correct label on this box. It could be only apples, it could be only oranges, or it could be apples and oranges. Now let's reason which possibilities are actually possible. Could this box actually contain only oranges? No. The sample given to us was an apple, so it is not possible that the correct label to this box is only oranges. Eliminate this possibility. Now consider, can the box actually contain both apples and oranges? It seems logically possible if we got an apple, the box could actually contain both apples and oranges. This is where we have to focus on another detail of the riddle. We are told that all of the box labels are incorrect. So the box that is labeled apples and oranges cannot truly be apples and oranges. This possibility must be eliminated. Therefore, by the process of elimination, we know that the true label to this box must be apples. So we can correctly label that this box contains only apples. But it seems like we've only solved for the label of one box. What can we deduce for the remaining two boxes? Let's consider the box that is labeled oranges. It could have only apples, only oranges, or apples and oranges. But we've already used the label of apples, so we can eliminate this possibility. We also know that all of the box labels are wrong, so this box cannot truly contain only oranges. We eliminate this possibility. This leaves only one option, that the box labeled oranges must actually truly contain both apples and oranges. We can label this box. So now we are down to one box, and of course, by the process of elimination, we can remove the label for apples that's already used and the label for apples and oranges. So this box must contain only oranges. 
and we have correctly labeled all of the boxes using just one sample. Wow! In this particular explanation, I showed that the sample from the apples in orange box was an apple. We were able to label all three boxes. For comprehensive sake, let us go ahead and see what happens if the sample instead was an orange. So pick the apples in orange box and suppose the sample is an orange. Let's see how we can quickly label all of the boxes correctly. Now, of course, we have three possibilities. We have an orange, so we know the box cannot be only apples. Eliminate this possibility. Since the box is labeled apples and oranges, it cannot truly contain apples and oranges, so we know that this box cannot be labeled apples and oranges. We eliminate this possibility, and we are left with the only possibility that this box must contain only oranges. This box can be labeled as oranges. We then consider the box that is labeled apples. We start out with the three possibilities. We have eliminated the possibility that it's oranges, that label's already used, and we know that it cannot be the label of apples because it is labeled apples and all of the labels are wrong. So eliminate this possibility. By the process of elimination, this box must truly contain apples and oranges. This label can be put correctly. And finally, we have a box that's remaining. And from the three possibilities, we eliminate the possibilities that are already taken by the other boxes. So the box that's labeled oranges must truly contain apples. And once again, we have labeled all three of the boxes using only one sample. This strategy will guarantee a solution. But there is another strategy that you can get the answer is one sample if you have a little bit of luck. So let me return to the beginning of the video. We picked a sample from the apples box and we got a sample that was oranges. We weren't able to tell if this came from the box that was only oranges or from the box that was truly apples and oranges. So if you got a sample that was an orange, you cannot solve any further. But what instead if you got a sample that was an apple? It turns out you can solve the puzzle. Let's see why this is true. So imagine the sample you get from this box is an apple. There are three possibilities for this box. We know that it can't truly contain only apples because that's the label that's on the box. This possibility must be eliminated. We know the sample is an apple, so it cannot be from the box that is only oranges. This possibility can be eliminated. That leaves only one possibility, that this box must truly be labeled apples and oranges. From here, we can go to the box that's labeled oranges. We again have three possibilities. The possibility of apples and oranges has already been taken by the first box. We know it can't actually be oranges because all of the labels are wrong. So that means this box must contain only apples. We can put the correct label of apples on this box. We now have one box. We've eliminated two of the possibilities. So that means the final box must actually contain only oranges. And we have been able to label all three boxes correctly using one sample. So if the box labeled apples gives a sample that's an apple, you can solve it. Or the box labeled oranges gives a sample that's an oranges, you can also fix the labels with one sample. However, you can't guarantee that you're going to get the correct sample. But it is still interesting to note that this is a possibility if you're forced to choose from that box. I now want to conclude the video with a different perspective on how to solve the problem. Start out with the three boxes that are labeled apples, oranges, and apples and oranges. How many different ways can the three labels be arranged on three boxes? The answer is three factorial. There are three possible labels for the first box. Once that is used, we multiply it by the two remaining possibilities for the second box. And finally, the last box will have one possibility. 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 6. Let's begin by enumerating the six possibilities. The first box could truly contain apples. It could have oranges, or it could be apples and oranges. If the first box is apples, the second box might contain oranges, or the second box could contain apples and oranges. If the first box contains apples, the second box contains oranges, the last box must be apples and oranges. 
If the first box is apples and the second box is apples and oranges, the final box must be oranges. Now suppose the first box is oranges. The second box could be apples or it could be apples and oranges. Whichever case is there on the second box, the final box will only have one option remaining. If the first box is apples and oranges, the second box could be apples or it could be oranges, and we can label the third box as appropriate. We know that all of the labels are wrong. The first box is labeled apples, so we can eliminate the two cases that the true label is actually apples. The second box is labeled oranges, so eliminate the labels that say this box actually contains oranges, and the final box has the label apples and oranges, so we can eliminate those labels. We can now eliminate any row in which there is at least one wrong label. So we can eliminate the first row, we can eliminate the second row and the third row, and we can eliminate the last row. None of these permutations are possible because at least one label is wrong. So there's only two ways that we can label these three boxes so that no box has the label that's written on it. To translate the question into mathematical jargon, we could ask the question, how many ways can we shuffle three labels so that no label stays in the same spot? The answer to this question is three sub factorial, which equals two. Now let's consider these two possibilities and see what happens when we get a sample from the apples and orange box. The two samples we could get are an apple or an orange. Suppose the sample given is an apple. We can then uniquely identify which of these two rows is the correct row. If the sample is an apple, then we know we must be in this top row so that the first box is oranges, the second box is apples and oranges, and the third box is apples. If instead the sample given was an orange, we know we must be in the bottom row and we can label all three boxes. The first box would be apples and oranges, the second box would be apples, and the third box would be oranges. So that's how we can get all three labels from just one sample of the apples and orange box. Now let's just work through what happens if you sample from one of the other boxes. Suppose you take a sample from the first box. The sample could be an apple or it could be an orange. Suppose the sample is an apple. In that case, the only possibility is that the true box contains both apples and oranges. It can't contain only oranges because the sample was an apple. So you would be able to label all three boxes just from this one sample. However, if the sample you got from this first box was an orange, you wouldn't know if it's from a box that truly had all oranges or from the box that contained apples and oranges. You would be stuck in this case. There is a parallel situation if you select from the second box. The sample could be an apple or an orange. Suppose the sample is an orange. You would then know that the true box would contain both apples and oranges. It couldn't contain only apples. So you would be able to identify all three labels from this one sample. But instead, suppose the sample was an apple. You wouldn't know whether the box contained apples and oranges or it contained apples. You would again be stuck. So if you want to do this correctly, you select a sample from the apples and orange box and you would be able to select the correct label for all three boxes. If you got a sample that's an apple, you could label all three. If you got a sample that's an orange, you could label all three. And that's the correct way to solve this puzzle. What an interesting riddle. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.